The Smart Woman Podcast, a podcast series brought to you by Gabriella Muller Coaching International. Your useful dose of coaching advice to help you get what you want more often with less trouble. Gabriella dives into big questions about what matters to women like you in the workplace. It's concrete, focused, and fun. Gabriella's coaching impacts thousands of women worldwide. Welcome to the Smart Woman Podcast. Now your host, Gabriella Muller. Hello, women from around the world. Welcome. You have arrived. This is the Smart Woman Podcast, a place for you to get strategies, ideas, and things that work to get better results and to make your life easier. I'm your coach, Gabriela Müller-Mendoza. Welcome. Have you ever worked for a bad boss, a terrible boss, whether it was a he or a she? I know I have. In my past experience in IT and telecom, I had pretty much a very good set of examples of leaders and bosses. Some of them, they were really not good bosses. Also, statistics show that bad bosses, in a way, the more power a boss has, the less likely he is to be open to feedback. So they hold bigger blind spots in, in the really not open to receive input from sometimes not only the reportees, but also from their own superiors. Now, I'm not talking about only somebody who's a bit disorganized. I'm talking really about somebody who displays bullying behavior, somebody who I'll just describe them a bit later, somebody who really could get um, to steal the peace of mind and <laughs> harmony in the team. And you've seen them. We actually have them in corporations, in NGOs, oftentimes in very senior positions. So what I want to give you is a couple of parameters and ideas for you to know, first of all, are you dealing with a situation where it's either a bully, a micromanager, somebody who really needs a new set of skills and strategies for you to succeed or to plan your escape and your leave. The other thing that I want to give you is ideas on how to cope day to day. And at the same time, if you have decided to stay for some reason and report to this person, how are you going to be able to make your life easier and at the same time to make sure that your performance is valued in the way it should? So due to my years of experience, coaching women in senior positions. I know there are many, many of them dealing with bad bosses of different times, different kinds. And I wasn't the exception. I just said before, personally, I have dealt with bad bosses or I have seen them in action in a lot of the organizations where I work as a coach and a trainer. And I know and I see firsthand what the effect is that they have on their people and the teams, the performance and their organizations, because a bad boss doesn't only impact the people that report to him or to her. They impact indirectly circles that interact with the people from their family members to suppliers to agencies or advisors that work with the team to third parties stakeholders that might be even a different area within the same matrix, and ultimately the end user or their customer. Because people unluckily take a lot of these behaviors, the, the anger or the frustration that accumulates in these teams, and this is energy and energy transforms and, and expresses itself in different ways, right? So you may have been interacting as a customer with a company who you thought they really had bad customer service. And if you go back to where these practices and this way of dealing with people start, oftentimes you are going to find mid and senior executives having these particular practices to deal with their own teams. So it starts somewhere. And I have always said, leadership sets the tone. So leaders in an organization, in a team, set the tone. And with the tone is this one, bullying, 
micromanaging, distrust, and toxic practices, well, the end result can't be so different. And before I give you some strategies, let me just make sure that we are on the same page on this one. There are unacceptable things and behaviors that you should simply not accept in your life at all. There are legal options. There is a legal framework, I'm sure, within your organization. There are rules and regulations that would protect you. Though, if you are compromised emotionally, you will be also compromised professionally, dealing with a bad boss for the long-term situation. So, you may decide to stay or to leave. I would encourage you, if, if you are already losing sleep over this, if you are living on a high level of stress, your sanity, your family life, your quality of life is suffering, you know the answer to this one. Though, if for whatever reason you decide to stay, here is a set of parameters and ideas that may serve you. First things first. I want to make sure to give you one or two parameters that often can be very useful in these situations. Sometimes we feel that if we are suffering a specific bad situation, we might be the, the only ones. So I want you to be brutally honest with yourself. Be a very good observer and notice how he, this particular bad boss we're talking about, how he deals with other people how he treats other stakeholders. Is there a pattern there? Are you be the only one who's been targeted? And if so, why? Are you bringing any behavior or practice to the office that would make him to think that it's easy to treat you this way? So I want you to be very uh, honest with yourself and Either you, you do it in your own terms or perhaps you get professional coaching uh, help or a good friend of you who, who can help you in this self-analysis phase. Observe. The other thing is that notice who he treats badly. Is there a similar pattern? Is there a similarity among those stakeholders who he feels entitled to treat really bad? The reason for this self-analysis step is because you may be dealing with somebody who's simply a bit more difficult than other stakeholders and not necessarily a bully. So that distinction is pretty important. Though, let's be quite honest, let's just say it. A bully is somebody who's demeaning, tough, rude, undervalues performance in his people, sometimes uses public ways to undermine his team. He or she wants to inspire fear and he gets a target usually, and this is interesting to think about, that oftentimes the target is the person who either is the most popular, well-liked or well-known, or the person with the highest level of experience. You may have seen this in your teams. And so if you are either one of these persons in a team, beware that Statistically, a bully would go after this person or the person who displays very likable behavior. And to deepen into this topic, you may want to go back when we talked about body language and executive presence because I gave a set of behaviors that increase the perception of likability. So this is one of the things that statistics shows that would be the target person of a bully boss. So now you want to make sure that in order to start using these effective strategies, you want to observe whether the bullying happens in a public display or on one-on-one -on -one meetings. Why? Because one of the strategies is to do exactly the opposite, to deal with this, to this situation. So if you are being bullied in a one-on-one -on -one situation, closed doors, no witnesses, what you want to make sure is you want to have records of the agreements, of the requests, of the results, of the talks and dates and times where you are having these conversations. And then you want to, at some point, involve a third party who would be able to have um, kind of like a third eye on your performance. Sometimes it's by expressing your ideas or having meetings with other business units, with other stakeholders, who then, of course, will look at you, will be aware of your good performance and good 
slowly and surely would build alliances with you. People who would be aware of the fact that you are adding value, you are getting visibility from other stakeholders at the same level or even levels above that bad boss we're talking about. And in that way, you are brightening your own network. And it's always good not to get or feel isolated within this complex matrix, especially if you are being bullied by your boss. Now, and if on the other hand, that boss is displaying this bullying behavior in a more public display, he's waiting for those status meetings to make sure that he points out the bad aspects that he perceives to be about your reputation or your behavior while diminishing your your personality or your your position in front of others. What you want to do is to approach it in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You want to do this smartly. You want to also do this in a very assertive and positive way, meaning you're not going to be confrontational because if you enter a power game with a bully at work, you can be sure you are set to lose. Because why? Because your boss, he will definitely use his power to do that. So you, what you want to do is avoid that power confrontation that he's looking for. So what kind of behavior and practices would you display? Assertive behavior, self-confident, assuring yourself that you can do this in a non-confrontational way. How do you translate this into behavior? Well, short sentences, not using the up talk that we have reviewed in some other chapters, meaning your sentences don't sound like questions when they are not questions, they're actually affirmations. Standing confidently when you need to, sitting in a relaxed position when you are, um, you are actually in a sitting position, keeping it factual and real, short sentences, sometimes less is more when dealing with one of these characters. What you want to do is also empower yourself before you enter into these interactions. And by doing that, you are sending the message of, I'm not afraid of you, and yet I'm not going to come into a power confrontation or fight with you. And you want to sound and look grounded, collected, calm. And for that, slower speed is better than fast. Want to make sure that you want agreements and you want to have these agreements in a written way and records of those agreements as you are moving on. Now, many of my coaches worldwide ask me this one. So I'm just going to ask the question and then give you the straight answer. What do I do with a micromanager boss? Now, this one is a different type of the very loud display of the bully boss. It could be a combination of both. Except that this particular boss wants to check and double check your performance, slows people down in results because he needs to make sure that everything is done by the way he wants exactly to be done. He or she will distrust people and is definitely bad at delegating. So it's too meticulous and too entangled into details. Okay. So if you have one of these bosses, one of the things is that you want to outsmart a micromanager boss. How do you do that? Well, instead of giving them less information that is going to raise their level of anxiety, what you want to make sure is you want to have an agreement. What kind of checkpoints and when he is going to need. So oftentimes I've seen some of my successful coaches dealing with a boss who happens to be a micromanager is agreeing on a first meeting or checkpoint in the morning. How things and what kind of actions will be taken on during the day and how. And then a closing point, a closing checkpoint. It could be an email, it could be a short call where they get reassurance of things were done and the results achieved were X, Y, Z. So you see more details. Believe it or not, with a micromanager, having an opening and a closing checkpoint in your day or your week 
it's going to make your life easier. It's not necessarily going to change all the behavior because they will continue to be the way they are. What's going to happen though, is you're going to have clarity about the criteria for success in your performance. And it's going to make your life easier because you're going to actually just get the results and the reassurance that they need to operate. And it's about them, not about you. So you want to make sure that you put these things in place. Additionally, my chicas, I have some good news too. You have to screen your boss and realize what is the best way to communicate with him. Is he an email person? Is he a telephone person? Or is he a face-to-face person? Because, dear my friend, this can actually solve tons of the challenges of communication among people, specifically with a bad boss. So, oftentimes I hear a lot of people complaining about, oh, well, my boss gets all the details he wants from me on emails and he never opens the emails. And this is so frustrating. And then when, whenever we talk, he wants to talk about all the details that I already reported in a written way. And I say, oh, well, I think your boss wants to hear about the details, not to be sent tons of emails with detailed information. You see, this is not about the information itself. And sometimes it's not about the performance. It's about the channel of communication that boss and reports are choosing to address each other. The same can happen with face-to-face encounters. Have you ever heard, uh, had the opportunity to talk to somebody who says, oh, it was just so nice to deal with you and to deal with this information and to review it in five minutes than to write you a long, long email, even if you would have preferred to read about it, <laughs> right? Same thing. One of the two parties is preferring one or the of the three different methods. So. There is visual information, there is auditory information and ways to connect, and there is a way to do face-to-face, hands-on work. So which one is the preferred method that he or she wants or needs? The same happens with you. So be a good observer and determine which is the best way to communicate with him, to decrease friction and to increase effectiveness. And finally, what happens if that bad boss is a bully or a micromanager? And on top of that, we're talking about a woman. Is there something to be particularly aware of when we're dealing with women like that in power? And I would say that I see a lot of parallel behaviors and at the same time, research confirms this, regardless of the gender and strategies would apply the same way. Though there is one or two things that may be a bit stronger aspects of dealing with a bully in this situation who happens to be a woman. Isolation is one of them. What do I mean by that? A female boss who's using these bad practices to lead would often try to isolate the one target person that she's after. Perhaps she's building alliances against a particular target person, or perhaps she's withholding key information for strategies that are going to be important for the other person to have. That's another way of isolating a target and exercises their power. So a couple of things to keep in mind here. Always keep the conversation and the work with her always within a professional framework. Avoid passive aggressive behavior from your part. And I know it's hard, though really it pays off. Can you confront her? Yes, you may try. And that doesn't actually mean she's going to change her behavior. So after coaching dozens of senior female executives dealing with bad bosses, I want to give you some golden nuggets at the end, chicas, because there is light at the end of the tunnel. Remember, your well-being, your sanity, your quality of life is priceless. Though if for whatever reason you want to stay or to plan strategically how to leave, remember a couple of golden rules never burn a bridge. Meaning if you are going to leave, you live well, with grace, professionally, and making sure that you stay in your own integrity. The courage to change will come from you. Do not expect the situation to get better simply by chance. You don't have to be nasty. You can be sassy, meaning come up with 
support systems, your own mantra to help each other, stand up, step up, speak up. Exercise self-control and self-knowledge is the key. Know your worth. So then it's going to be for you easy to detect unacceptable behavior and situations when you see them. Do a lot of self-care. Do whatever you need to do to vent whenever you need to vent the negativity of the situation. You want to make sure you do not use contacts within your professional network or at work to vent bad stuff about the situation and the frustration you may be experiencing. Even if you have friends, they are still connected to your work professional environment. So I would recommend you get somebody outside, whether it's a professional helper or simply as somebody who you trust, a good friend of mine. When addressing the bullying, speak up assertively. Self-confidence, direct, respectful communication skills pay off. And ultimately, if you are going to go to HR with this situation and then address it, it can be the right thing to do. You just need to know that it's not risk-free. You want to have a well-documented case before you knock on the doors, because oftentimes there is a backlash if you are not really aware of the rules, regulations, law, and the documentation you needed to gather. So you want to play this card in a very smart way when needed. And lastly, because I want you to have an amazing, fulfilling, positive life at work and at home, you want to assess the situation and then come up with a plan, be strategic, and don't live in an emotional rush way. At the same time, if you it's time to leave, you have closed a cycle, you have learned. Even bad bosses have important lessons to teach. At least, how not to lead. And you'll be a stronger, better leader once it's your turn to lead. So women, I leave you then these words and I hope the best for you. Let's stay connected. My Instagram is Coach Gabriela Müller. My website, GabrielaMüller.com. You can find me also as Gabriela Müller Coaching in Facebook. And now, if you want to get even more golden notes and strategies that can serve you, and I only share this on email, you want to then sign up for my newsletter, check it on the website and enter your email so that we stay connected along the way. So women, go out there, go for your boldest goals. Hasta la vista. And until next time in the Smart Woman podcast.